What did you do? <laughs> I may have made a mistake here. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. What's going on everybody? Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Uh, we're not really doing any work here in the shop tonight. We're instead getting ready for a little bit of an adventure. So we're actually flying to Kansas to pick up a 1957 Chevrolet Bel Air. It's already got a 5.3 and a 4L60 swapped into it. It's got coilovers, Willwood disc brakes, and a whole bunch of other pretty good parts on it. But the thing is, it was never finished. So we're gonna fly to Kansas starting tomorrow morning and then drive that car a thousand miles home after finishing somebody else's LS swap. I think it could go really wrong or it could go really well. So next time you see us, it will be tomorrow morning and we'll be heading to the airport to take a flight to Kansas City with a couple check bags full of tools and parts. What could go wrong? I'm sure it'll be fine. Should be an adventure no matter what. Here we go, let's make it happen. All right, well, it's officially tomorrow. It's 5.30 in the morning or so. Yeah. My dad is wearing sunglasses at night. Don't know why, but this whole thing is stupid, so it makes sense. All, um, all the famous people always wear dark sunglasses. Yeah, not really at yeah. night while driving, well, Wait a minute, I'm not famous. <laughs> well, there's that too, yeah. So we're heading to the airport. We've got two suitcases full of tools. They both weigh roughly 49 pounds, according to the scale. They're heavy. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully the scale is right, <laughs> so we don't have to shuffle some stuff around last minute, but cue the travel montage. 30 seconds from now, we'll be in Kansas. Just like that. We are on the ground in Wichita, Kansas. Oh, yeah. Our bag showed up, which is good. So we have our parts and tools. And now we need to find our ride. So there's a guy named Ryan Penner who went and picked up this car for us. We've never met him before. And my dad- Friend of a friend. Yeah, my dad sent him a bunch of money to go pick up this 57 Chevy. And it's been in his garage for like, I don't know, two months? Two, three months, something like that. Yeah. Well, we had to get the truck done for Power Tour and then uh, schedule didn't allow it. So here we are now. Yeah, so shout out to Ryan for uh, not only storing the car for us for two months, but also going and picking it up and now picking us up. What a legend. So we'll be on the lookout for him. Look, our ride showed up. It's a red truck in Kansas. It's giving me Twister vibes. Should be fine, right? <laughs> All right, let's load up and go check out the car. We just made it to Mr. Ryan Penner's house. He's been storing the car for us and uh, picked us up at the airport. Yep. That's some good customer service right there. And uh, we're seeing the car for the first time. How do you feel about it? We already walked around it. It's a little rough, a little rougher than the pictures, but uh, I still don't think it's uh, a bad deal. And uh, you know, the main thing is, will it get us home? Yeah. Yeah. That's yet to be determined, but give you a quick walk around of the car here in a second. But it's uh, it looks good on camera. I can tell you that much. And uh, we'll give you a deeper dive into it and show you all the things that are going on with it because we're going to be figuring it out as we go too because this is our first time seeing it. We don't really know we have some, some details. I did ship some parts here, uh, so hopefully we can get some sort of exhaust cobble together. I got an intake. 
um, be able to run an air intake over here to the side. But yeah, we're gonna dive in and uh, see what we can figure out. But hey, it's a yellow 57 two-door Chevy. So, uh, and it's not electric. Yeah, Project X is uh, kind of looking a little pitiful right now with a golf cart swap going on. <laughs> um, so we got our own project and we're calling it Project Y instead of Project X. <laughs> and I think the name is very fitting. So anyway, we're gonna dig in a little deeper. I'll give you guys a tour of all the stuff we have found and will find, and then we're gonna get to work because this old stock ECU and all that wiring has got to go. We're going to put a holly on it and uh, that'll allow us to drive home a lot better than that stock ECU just laying on the floor. Professional. Door shut's good at least. All right, so the car looks a lot better in pictures than it does in person. So even here on the camera, it looks pretty good. But when you get closer, like this kind of rust kind of works you know, adds to the patina. But you get over here, that's when you start to get into trouble. So it's a Midwest car, it's kind of to be expected. That is a lot of Bondo and rust. So I think we're gonna have to patch some of that stuff. But overall, I think it's got a killer look. The frame is good. The frame is good, there, that counts for a there's lot. There's an LS in it already and a 4L60, QA1 suspension, Willwood brakes. There's a lot of stuff that's good on it, that's right, so. It's a trade-off. Yeah, the thing is, somebody started an LS swap on this car and never finished it. And so we've gone and revived lots of different cars that have been sitting, but didn't get modified like this. So this is a whole different adventure, like fixing somebody's LS swap after they've already started it. I, it's something I've never done in like a day or two timeline. So that's gonna be interesting. Um, yeah, so basically in theory right now the car runs i think you actually drove it into the garage right yes so it drove into the garage so we're gonna hook the battery up we're gonna pull this thing out of the garage and then kind of clean up a little bit pull it in here and raise up the front end and get to work so we're gonna get this thing situated where it's a little easier to work on and then uh give you the full tour because there's lots of stuff going on like this is one of my favorite things I've found so far. I mean, there's lots of junk in here, don't get me wrong. But somebody reupholstered the doors at some point. And check it out. It's Jimmy Carter, a president from Georgia. It's a sign, right? <laughs> that it's supposed to go to Georgia. Yep. Will it make it to Georgia? So, Yet to be determined. So the plan is to head out for Georgia tomorrow morning. Yeah. About 920 miles. Tomorrow morning. I'm thinking more like tomorrow mid-afternoon based on what I'm looking at because the thing needs a little bit of love. Like not only is the factory ECU laying on the floor there, but the seat's not bolted to anything. If you lift up the carpet, there's wood under there. And this is not like a 20s or 30s car that's supposed to have wood on the floor. You can see the, the road through there. It's, it's great. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be awesome. What did you do? I may have made a mistake here. <laughs> oh boy. Let's see if it runs. Yeah, pump them a little bit. So it's a battery from 2021 and it's already dead. It's only from November. Well, he's got the jump box handy. Oh, the front grill's falling out of it too. What a quality automobile. You have to put a little gas. It's been a while. Should we have bought round trip tickets? <laughs> <laughs> That? Crank it a little longer, it takes a while to kill. Well, <laughs> that's a good start. But really, we don't care about that because we're replacing everything that makes this thing run anyway. So maybe we'll just roll it back and forth a little bit and get it in position where we can work on it. 
easy enough. Oh, there's no grip in here. That's probably good enough to work on. It's nice it doesn't First things first, it didn't start, even though it was supposed to. So that's a good sign. But that's exactly why we brought a Terminator X. So we're gonna swap the ECU and the wiring harness because you never know what somebody did. So when you do a factory ECU, you have to cut everything up and splice it together. And it just ends up being a disaster generally. So it's probably why this thing is a little bit unreliable. Um, so we're gonna gut the factory ECU and wiring out of this car and work on replacing it with nice new stuff from Holly. Yeah, this is gonna be a lot of work. Luckily, the Holly part is not that much work. The rest of this car is gonna be a lot of work. Why did I think they had clothes in them? No, just tools. <laughs> just tools and parts. So normally you work out of toolboxes. On this trip, we're working out of suitcases. <laughs> Look, I even brought carpet. <laughs> The small bags that we brought, that's our clothes. Yeah, so we brought some parts. So I brought some uh, exhaust pieces I made. Hopefully they're gonna fit. I think they, they look about right based on looking at it now that I'm actually here in person. So I welded these together in the shop last night. Um, so that way we can get an O2 sensor in it and actually run some exhaust, you know, other than open headers. I made this panel, which is gonna block off the firewall uh, where the heater box goes and the ECU is actually gonna mount to it and then the wires will run through it into the engine bay. I think it's gonna work. It's a little janky. Recycling. I even have Velcro on it. Recycling metal. And then what we really need is the Terminator X. So we're gonna be uh, putting a Terminator X Max on this car. So I have that entire kit in here with my wiring tools and various different hand tools and a bunch of different components and things we're gonna need to make this work. Two suitcases. That's all we're gonna need, other than maybe a couple lug nuts and a battery. Anyway, I'm gonna start tearing all the old wiring off of this thing and uh, get ready for the new stuff. And uh, I'm gonna look at the seat, I think. See what I can do to secure that, because it's like a rocking chair. Yeah, so this thing not only doesn't have seat belts because it's from 1957, but also, it's got tape holding this door shut, which is great. That's a safety feature. And a seat that's not bolted down. It's taped shut. So I don't know if that's because the latch doesn't work or because... I think the latch doesn't work or it's gone. Yeah. It's uh, another feature of this fine vehicle. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Luckily, the, I think we're actually going to be able to bolt that to something. No, we hope so. There's wood up here too. What the heck? Bizarre. Yeah, gotta watch for termites. It's got the old stereo two band, whatever that means. The dash is complete, which is nice. It's even got the clock still in it. Glove box door that doesn't shut. <clears throat> um, gauges are still in it. It's got a B&M ratchet shifter, which is working the 4L60 that's in this thing. The back seat's actually pretty nice. I'm impressed by that. All the trim is in the car, so I don't know if you noticed, some of the trim is missing on the outside of this thing, but it's all there, so that way we can get that reattached and looking right. This is gonna be quite an adventure. Cut to the time lapse while we get some work done, because <laughs> there's a lot to do. <laughs> Cut to the time lapse while I cry. <laughs> The old harness is finally out. And this is one of the dirtiest cars I've ever worked on. Pressure wash your junkyard motors before you put them in something, cause that's just awful. But getting rid of that to make room for all this. All right, so we've run into two problems so far. Uh, the battery from November of 2021 is already completely dead and won't hold a charge. So it probably froze this winter if I had to guess. And also I ordered the wrong injector harness. I basically took a guess 
based on what I knew about this engine, that it would have Multec 2 injectors, but it's apparently got EV6 style injectors. So this harness isn't gonna work. And I could just take the old harness, which is sitting over here, and cut these injector plugs off and wire it, you know, to the new harness, but that's a little too much work. Luckily, we are in Wichita, Kansas, which is home to ICT Billet, and they actually sell little adapter plugs. So I think we're gonna go pay them a visit and buy a set of little adapters, and uh, we'll be in business. But got the old harness out, and uh, now it's time to start preparing to put the nice new Holly in there. It's gonna be so much nicer. One thing at a time. For now, we gotta go to ICT Billet and then uh, Walmart to get a battery. So we're gonna let the 57 Chevy sit here and think about what it's done and go get some parts. Shout out to Ryan here for not only giving us a garage to work in, but also being our chauffeur around town, it seems. Not, not a shabby deal. I'm used to working in parking lots and dirt and this is much better. Well, there we go. We made it to ICT Billet. They make a lot of killer LS swap adapter parts in this building right here. And they happen to have a couple Lamborghinis out front. This one still has the V10 in it, I believe. But this one has a twin turbo LS in it. So we already went inside and grabbed the part we needed. So this is an adapter that goes from the old Multec 2 style injector to the EV6 injector. So it just plugs into the harness, then plugs into the injector of the vehicle. So that should resolve our problem and uh, we'll be back in business. There we go, we made it back to the car. We've got a brand new battery from Walmart. They exchanged it in on warranty, even though we weren't the ones that bought it. I will say they did never ask. All they said was, do you have a receipt? That's and you right. said no, that was an honest answer. My dad's gonna crawl under the car and start putting the exhaust on. Uh, we have a couple V bands to attach with the pieces of exhaust I made. We have one exhaust pipe that's gonna fit pretty well, the other, might need a little tweaking once yes. we get it on the road. Luckily, we only need one O2 sensor to run this thing. So I basically took a guess at where these pipes ended up. And uh, luckily this one, I think seems to work on one side, if I remember right. I don't know, we'll figure it out. And uh, I'm gonna start wiring up the engine. I wonder how fast I can put a Terminator X on. It's the real question. My favorite band, the V band. You're an idiot. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start wiring this thing up and uh, I'll try to explain some of what I'm doing as I go, but for the most part, I'm just gonna be working because I wanna get this knocked out. What you doing under there? Oh, just cutting on the frame a little bit. Yeah, so this header, the outlet had it dumping right into what is one of the old transmission mounts. So it's gotta get cut off the frame. So my dad's under there, cutting it off with the Sawzall. While my dad continues to hack away on the frame down there with the Sawzall, I made a little block off plate for the heater. Uh, so normally your heater core would kind of mount right here with a heater box and a fan and everything. So I used one of our power tour long hauling signs right there. And the ECU is actually mounted on the back side of this. And this is gonna be my engine harness and my transmission harness and uh, we'll run our power wires up here to the battery. So now it's time to start laying out the Holly Terminator harness on the engine, plugging everything in, and uh, getting ready to fire it up on Holly instead of all that factory garbage that was in there. But check it out. The inside of this car is not the nicest, but if you look up here, there's a Terminator X. You probably can't really see it, it's dark up there. But there's one nice thing in this car at least. So, a little bit at a time, we'll make it roadworthy again. Now that my dad is done sawzawing under there and he's just wiggling that piece of the frame back and forth till it breaks off, uh, I can actually tell you guys what's going on. So uh, this is the brand new harness that comes with the Terminator X. It's nicely labeled. See, there's the ignition even side. You got your crank trigger. Um, you got your plugs that go into the ECU. And if you notice, all these connectors are weather packed, so they have a rubber gasket in there. They're fairly watertight. I'm not gonna say you can put it under water, but it keeps most water out. Um, so we're just gonna lay this on top of the engine. And there's only really one way 
to put this on there and then everything has its own plug that it goes into. It's really easy, really intuitive, really obvious. So we're gonna lay this on top of the engine, get the wires run inside to the ECU and then we'll run our transmission harness as well and then hook up power uh, to the battery with this harness that has a built-in fuse and lots of extra length if you mount the ECU somewhere far away from the battery. So yeah, I'm gonna start laying that on there and uh, I'll show you anything important as we go. Eventually it'll come loose, right? Eventually, one would think. Metal can be tough. You can fatigue the metal enough, it'll come out. Yeah. So we're getting this old piece of the frame out of the way so we can run our exhaust. You see exhaust uh, downpipe is already kind of in place on that side. Um, we got to make some room on this side to be able to do the same thing. So, so he's working on, I guess I'll film it till he gets it out. It's fatiguing me. Hey. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, camera. <laughs> you look exhausted. <laughs> yeah, where's that exhaust pipe? I'm really It's exhausted. laying right there. Real question is, is that going to fit after all that work? Hey, the answer is no. It's close. Yeah. It should have been a little longer. Better than nothing, though. We're making progress a little bit at a time, so now that he's got that off, I'm going to start laying out this engine harness and uh, getting the next step done. <laughs> So there is the bulk of the engine harness done. Uh, it's laid on there, kind of where it's gonna go. Almost everything's plugged in. So we got our TPS, our idle air control, uh, the odd coils, the even coils. We still have to put our injector harness on. I got the map hooked up. Our O2 sensor wiring is gonna be back there. I gotta hook up the crank sensor the cam sensor and the oil sensor, but really it just kind of lays on there and works. I mean, even your coolant temp sensors down here. So there are a couple things you don't use um, if you don't have the sensors. So if you don't have an air temperature sensor, you can kind of just tuck this under the intake manifold. Same with the fuel pressure, you can do the same. Uh, so that's tucked up under there. Looks a lot cleaner and nicer than the factory harness. And that's pretty much everything that you need on top of the engine. Minus, of course, the injector harness that he's putting our little adapters on from ICT Billet. Thanks, ICT. Yep. Now I have to run the transmission harness through that hole on the left and bring that down to the transmission. And then that's almost all the wiring except for just hooking up power and ground and switched ignition to it. It's really that simple. Even the harness is labeled with the cylinder numbers, so you really can't get that messed up. Um, some people still will probably find a way. Maybe him. Yeah. Yet to be determined, but literally, you know, 1357, 2468, you just hook one, everything up. 1234, 5678. Nope, that's wrong. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to show you one of my favorite mods on an LS if I can do it one handed. If you're ever going to put a 5.3 in your vehicle, get rid of this thing. Everybody thinks you need to go buy a different oil cap, but really you can just take, here, pull that. It'll come off. You can just take that off, untwist that, and that'll go right into the, the valve cover and you can get rid of that stupid, ugly extension. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Nice and clean. Simple modifications. So my dad's in the car vacuuming out years of dust and dirt 
and mouse turds and everything else in between. This is a piece of carpet that was in uh, the back of the El Camino behind the seats and I don't have carpet back there anymore. So I actually used it to kind of insulate and cushion all my tools. So this came all the way from Georgia with us and it's gonna go in the car so that we don't have to uh, look at the highway through the floor. We'll instead have carpet. So you'll notice there's like strips of wood. So I guess they screwed down the carpet or maybe there was the little tacks through, but there's like strips of wood like you put around the perimeter of your rooms when yeah. you're putting in carpet. I don't think that's factory. I think somebody decided they wanted to literally nail wood in. There is a nail. On I think GM did that. Both sides of that. So I don't know what's going on with this car. Strips of wood all over it. Got seats the, rocking front around. Chair, front seat. So cool thing, unlike the Hornets, where you can't get parts for them, this car you can get all kinds of parts. So we can we can rebuild it. Which is good because it needs it. I mean, yeah. No headliner. There is hardly any wiring in this car. So I don't know if we have headlights, tail lights. There's carpet up there. Oh yeah, somebody carpeted the headliner at some point. Yeah, nice. nice. And it's like shag carpet. Look at how <laughs> thick that pile is. It's like, yeah, that's good stuff. But he's working on cleaning up the inside. Uh, I'm wiring up the transmission and then it's all connecting everything to ignition and 12 volt power and hopefully firing it up after we go through the setup wizard. Before the evening is over, it will run. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it will run and drive, that's another story, but it will run. And uh, yeah, I was saying, I don't think there's any headlights. And I can virtually guarantee it because that's the headlight plug right there. And there is no wires to the entire front of this car. No horn wire, no turn signals, no headlights. Bluetooth. Yeah, <laughs> Bluetooth wiring. <laughs> oh goodness, what have we gotten ourselves into? That's a nice car. Nice is a relative term. That's right. It's a cool car. I mean, if you didn't have a car, this would be better than not having one. Yeah, so this right here is my favorite part on Tri-5 Chevys, is this wing window. Instead of, you know, being the old just push it style, you get a window crank to be able to actually open and close the wing window. And then they've got a cool little latch where you just slide this and that locks it. They were thinking back then. Got a door panel on this side but not on the other side. Sounds about right. It's like half together. Actually, maybe not even half. 25% together. <laughs> but we'll get it figured out. Checking off one item at a time. So I'm almost done wiring under the hood. I just have to hook up the alternator, uh, battery power to the ignition switch, and then the positive and negative cables to the actual battery. My dad's under here changing the oil on this thing. And for the entire first part of that um, draining, it was just gasoline. So I think he's finally got a little bit of oil. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was definitely struggling to run. So we're gonna put some fresh oil in it. And with the new Terminator X, it will definitely have a better chance at uh, working and uh, not dumping a bunch of gas down the cylinder. And I just pulled this out of the coilover. No idea what that is. Looks like some sort of rubber isolator that somebody used that didn't work. Oil is much, much better lubricant for the engine. Yeah, oil's better than gasoline for lubricant, for sure. Yeah. We really need to raise the front of this thing up a little bit with these QA1 adjustable coilovers. So, I don't think we have a tool for it, which could be difficult, but we'll see what we can do. Ryan's over here cleaning the windshield <laughs> for the first time in who knows how many years. All right, well, I'm gonna get to wiring. My dad's gonna finish changing the oil, and then hopefully we'll be able to fire this thing up.
getting close. Guys, my dad's here changing a headlight, which is completely necessary to get the car running, considering there's no wires even run from the inside of the car to the headlights. But it was broken, so it did need fixed at some point. We're uh, taking a gamble on this one because it's not cracked, so maybe it's good. Um, the engine is completely wired up and ready to fire up. All we gotta do is hook up the battery along with these two connections for the Terminator X and uh, then go through the setup wizard on the little three and a half inch dash. So up under here, I have the Terminator X mounted. Obviously the wires are a bit of a mess. Uh, I'll go back and clean that up later, provided this all works, but you look up in there, there's the Terminator X. Um, got all my wires run over to the ignition switch and it's pretty much ready to go. So we're gonna throw a battery in this thing, watch out for smoke, and then uh, see if it'll make some noise. How you feeling? Confident. I'm sure you got it right, Jake. Debatable. You never, sure. you never get it right first try. It normally takes at least two. Probably normally three. No, you got it. All right, so uh, let's go through the setup wizard after we toss the battery in and see how it goes. There's still plenty of stuff to button up, but we just want to hear it run because we haven't gotten to hear it run yet. And it is going to be open headers, so it's going to be pretty loud. The HOA is not going to be happy, right, Ryan? I don't even think he's in no. here. He didn't say anything, so we're good. Yeah. <laughs> you can't object. It doesn't count. So. This is a moment of truth where you find out if uh, all your wiring's right or you let the smoke out of something. So I'm just going to touch this connector to the positive post for now. I don't see any smoke, got a tiny little spark out of it. So I think it's actually working. So I'm gonna put this on and then we're gonna turn the key and see what happens. It Here. definitely looks a lot better under under there. Yeah, it the was... factory harness, you know, while there are some reasons people use it, just for looks alone, I mean, look how much cleaner that looks. And you know, it's still just a truck engine with a terrible looking manifold. And it's really dirty because whoever built this didn't even think to clean the engine for some reason. Didn't take the extra step of breaking out the pressure washer, but it looks a whole lot better without that harness. And what's also nice is everything's just plug and play. It's really easy to figure out where everything goes and it's a brand new harness. So you don't have to deal with any brittle connectors. You don't have to deal with a bunch of dirty, sticky old tape and oily, greasy stuff. Plus it's wrapped in like that woven nylon that's so much nicer than that corrugated plastic and uh yeah it's got all its relays and fuses built in it's a pretty killer setup we've been working on it maybe four hours and doing a little bit of other stuff other than just installing the terminator and it's almost completely installed i think all i really have to do is do an output for the electric fan and then it's good to go so i didn't really check the wiring before i pulled it apart under the dash and uh, I'm hoping I connected everything right. So when I turn this key, we're about to find out if this screen lights up, we did everything right. There we go. We got the screen lighting up, which means there is indeed power to the ECU. So what you start at when you first put this thing together, let me pull this out a little further, is you're gonna do a TPS auto set. So when you go to do that, basically you go to wizards, TPS auto set, make sure ignition is on, engine not started. And then you slowly push the gas pedal all the way to the floor twice. And then once you get that done, you hit next and you have your auto set on the throttle position sensor done. And that way it knows where the throttle is when you're actually hitting the throttle on the floor. So what we're gonna do is go through the GCF wizard. So you go through and you tell the ECU everything that you have going on. So we have multi-port fuel injection. It's a GM LS, eight cylinders, obviously the right firing order. This is a 5.3. So we're gonna do metric liters and uh, basically drag this thing over to where we need it and then drop it down to 5.3. Target idle speed, let's aim for nine, somewhere in the 900 range. 
let's do 950. Uh, it's stock camshaft as far as I know, so below 235 degrees of duration. It's a 24X 1X motor, so it's a 24 tooth reluctor wheel on the crank. Uh, fuel pressure should be roughly 58 with the regulator that's on this thing, so we'll just set it at um, 60. Uh, we're using the uh, GM one bar. Uh, the Terminator X does have the option to use an internal one bar where you just run a vacuum line to it, but we actually plugged into the map sensor on top of the engine. So hit that, drive by wire, no GM LSX. Transmission control, yes. GM 4L60 5E. This is pre-2009, so that should be the correct one. Tire diameter, what's the back tire? Probably like a 28 inch tire. 26. 26, oh. A little lower than I expected, but. Low profile. Yeah, it does have some rubber bands on it. Rear end ratio, I am going to just guess that it's like a 273, because this car would have come originally with a power glide, so it probably has a highway gear. There we go, we're gonna try that. Uploading the tune. Now it's good to go. We ran it through the setup wizard and uh, we gotta cycle the key. And fuel pump kicks on. Uh, so the fuel pump doesn't kick on until you do the wizard, just so you know. So if you're wondering about the uh, lack of fuel pump noise when you first put it together, that's probably why. I don't know why the IAC is at 88%, but we'll find out and make sure it's in neutral and see if it fires. Oh, is that that climactic? Wah, wah. Gotta check some wiring. <laughs> but at least this is working, so most of my wiring is correct. Take two. Yeah, real question is how easy is it gonna actually fire it up? Because when we did the one on the El Camino at LS Fest, it barely turned over at all and caught and ran. I mean, it was like immediate. So, let's see if this thing does the same. I don't know if I'm as optimistic based on how this thing went together, but we'll find out. Fingers crossed, let's see what happens. Doesn't sound like it's wanting to run, so. I'm gonna yeah. go check some things, see if we missed anything. So we just chased down some bad grounds. I only had a couple limited places to be able to put them with this intake manifold and how long the wires are on the harness. So I changed it up a little bit. I think we've got a solid ground now. So hopefully the coils will fire and this thing will run. Let's find out. All right, here we go. Yeah, buddy. Something as simple as that. The first thing I checked was what it was. Doesn't normally work out that You're way. You're awesome, Jake. I have my moments. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is day two of trying to get this 57 back on the road. Uh, so we're up bright and early. Uh, airing up the tires this morning. I gotta wire up the fans. Uh, trying to figure out some sort of brake switch. So we have brake lights, but that's kind of like out of necessity and we need to bleed the brakes uh other than that it's uh topping off all the fluids and uh taking it for a test drive and hopefully getting to the muffler shop here in wichita before they close at noon so hopefully we can be there at like 10 realistically and uh, that way we can get proper exhaust on this car and not go completely insane on the drive from exhaust fumes and the noise level so we're gonna get to work. Uh, it's going pretty well though. Car fired up last night for the first time, sounded good, made oil pressure, and uh, in theory, we'll be good to go. This stuff Ryan's telling me about, Hosezilla. 
Hosilla. Flexilla, yeah. I think is what it's called. Or Sounds like a girl I once knew. Hot. <laughs> what? Hosilla. <laughs> well, well then. Just kidding. All right. Well, we're going to get after this and hopefully get it on the road here shortly. We'll find out. So we've been working on the 57 a little bit this morning. Uh, we let it run for a little bit. Uh, mocked up kind of a nice air cleaner setup. Uh, wired up the fans. So pretty much the car is ready to go, but we were letting it idle and warm up a little bit and it started leaking out the back press in plate of the water pump. Um, this is like a Camaro style water pump. Uh, this one's actually from Holly Performance. I remember the guy when we were on the phone, the guy who built this car, we actually talked to him and he told us some issues it had. He mentioned the brakes, he mentioned a leaky water pump and uh, the fact that it needed exhaust and O2 sensors and stuff. So we're kind of running into those problems. So we're trying to figure out a way around it. I think we're gonna pull the water pump off, uh, see if we can see where it's leaking, um, maybe put some RTV on it or something. Uh, I really wanna find one, but I don't know if we'll be able to find one of these locally. This is something you would be able to get at Summit Racing really easily, but unfortunately Summit Racing isn't 40 minutes from Ryan's house. It's 40 minutes from our house, which is a thousand miles from here. We're gonna have to go home by way of Texas. Yeah, possibly. There's a summit in Dallas. So. We'll see what we can figure out, but the car runs. Uh, we're trying to get it to the muffler shop before they close at noon. It's like, what, nine something right now? Yeah, 9.30, so we got a little bit of time. We're gonna see what we can find out. At least the coolant's nice and clean. Granted, you just put it in yesterday. That's right, that's so, so. This engine was like completely dry of coolant when we started on it, so this might be why. Leaky water pump. But it seems to run pretty good. Uh, almost everything's done. Just got to figure out a few problems. And we'll be Georgia bound. Yeah, the front brakes don't really work that great. The back brakes seem to be working properly, but I don't know how bad it is till we drive it. So we're gonna look at this water pump real quick and see what we can figure out. Well, yet another parts run. We got the water pump off. It's leaking from this back housing and uh, you know, worst comes to worst, you could just JB weld it probably and make it stay, but we're gonna see if we can find a water pump at O'Reilly's. We might miss our uh, window getting to the muffler shop, but we'll see. Look, you we got even got a loaner car from the Penners. <laughs> they are much too good to us. There we go, made it to O'Reilly's. Uh, we're gonna go inside, see if they have the water pump we need. We brought the old one so we can compare. Hey, I like the hat. Gasoline forever. That's right. We don't have an electric 57. Yeah, we don't have Project X. We have Project Y, as in Project Why are we doing this? <laughs> Why are we driving a 57,000 miles home instead of just towing it? Why? I don't know. It'll be fine. Adventure. Yeah, adventure is out there. We have certainly found it, along with a lot of pain and suffering. Shout out to O'Reilly for always being there when you need them. There we go. That was a success. We got a new water pump. We got some more coolant. Now it's back to slap this on there and see if we can still make it to the muffler shop. I'm kind of skeptical at this point. We're probably going to be cobbling the exhaust together out of like flex pipes and safety wire and whatever else we could find. Yeah. I'm sure, it'll be great. Now that we're back at the car from the auto parts store, my dad's pulling the tensioner off the old water pump. Uh, we also got to pull the thermostat housing off and our heater bypass hose. This is a water pump off of a 2010 to 2015 Camaro. So something with a 6.2 liter LS3 essentially. So it's pretty much identical to the Holly water pump. Uh, I assume this car probably just had water in it when the guy put it together. And I bet that that water pump froze and blew out the little pressed in the freeze plug. steel insert in the back. <laughs> Basically, yeah, a giant freeze plug. Yeah. So that's probably what went wrong with it. Uh, the battery in this thing was only like seven months old and, had, yeah. and was completely dead, so I assume it froze as well. So I think this car probably sat in some really cold temperatures and I'm betting it uh, that's right. pushed the back of this water pump out just from sitting. It's Holly, it's a quality water pump, but it can't handle water freezing in it. Yeah, that's not good for anything on a car. So we're gonna change that water pump out, 
fill it back up and hope there's no more leaks. My dad already got the water pump installed, so new water pumps on there. All the hoses are put back on, the cool belts on. Right filled it with coolant, got the air intake on. He's just been knocking some things out while I've been under the car struggling because we're figuring out some exhaust. So we bought these little flexible pieces from the auto parts store. I don't know if this will survive the trip home, but we're gonna find out. So at least we'll be able to get the pipe in the orientation we need. And that's very important because this side, tolerances are very tight. Uh, I'm adding some heat shield on the transmission lines. I added some DEI uh, spark plug boots on this side of the engine because the boots were pretty close to the header. And yeah, I'm gonna slide under, put this thing up in there and see how we're looking. Whew. I was just under the car for like a good hour, maybe, but I don't know if you can see it. We got an exhaust system. Uh, it's kind of cobbled together, but it should work to get us home. So if you look up here, up front, we've got this uh, kind of flex hose with a big clamp going to a two and a half inch pipe, which goes to a Flow Max Flow Master muffler on both sides. So it's actually pretty nice for hack work. So I think it'll come ho get home without falling apart. We'll find out. Uh, my dad's been messing with the brakes and he thinks he found a slight problem. So I'm gonna show you what he's doing. So basically, before you put a master cylinder on, you're supposed to bench bleed it because sometimes there can be air trapped in the end of the actual uh, cylinder and push rod that's inside of there. So he put a loop brake line back to itself because uh, this is like a dual sided master cylinder. You could run the lines off of either side. So go ahead and hit the brake pedal. You see the air coming out right there? That's no you don't want air in your brake system. So right now we're working the air out of the end of that cylinder by pushing it out back into the reservoir. And uh, that way you can pump the pedal over and over again without having to crack a bleeder or something. So in and theory, is, that'll help. This is especially important because if you're putting a new master cylinder on your car and there's all this air in, the, in there, you're actually pumping it down through the system. So you gotta do a lot of pumping before you ever purge all the air out where this without dripping brake fluid everywhere you're just looping around and pushing all the air out much better way but we're about ready to fire it up with the new mufflers and uh actually be able to hear this engine which right. will be nice i will say i really like this fix we stopped at walmart and bought a reflector and my dad ground down the edge of it and put it on this side because it was missing the lens so that way we look legit, even though it's actually kind of a redneck fix. Fire it up. All right, here we go. Don't touch the gas. What'd you do? So you touch stuff and it always goes wrong. Or is it just out of gas? Because we have no idea how much gas is in it. That could be it. Sometimes it's the simple things. Yeah, we'll try the simple thing first. So Ryan just added a little gas to the tank and it runs now. So that's always a good thing. Let's hear what it sounds like for you guys because you got you didn't get to hear it. It's still struggling. It's not as happy as it was. Heard a little backfire. That's always nice.
livable? As long as the exhaust doesn't fall off on the road, right? That's right. All right, so we're gonna get situated, get the car on the ground, and take it for a spin, see how it does. on the ground so you know what that means time taking for a test drive test drive time here hold this he always makes me drive stuff i think he's scared he's gonna wreck it so he puts all the responsibility on me no pressure like the brakes there's no pressure yes literally So it survived the drive to the gas station, which is only like three tenths of a mile. But here's one of the coolest parts on a 57 is your gas filler neck is behind that piece of trim right there. You just pop the cap out and fill it up through your taillight essentially. There we go. It's first gas stop in who knows how long, probably quite a few years. But look, got a license plate. We got registration, insurance, and these folks are just chilling in the car. Two. <laughs> Y'all having a good time? Oh yeah. yeah. It's cool to see it out in public on the street for the first time in who knows how many years. Hood is definitely trying to fly open. That's safe. But yeah, there we go. Now we've made it probably half a mile. Now we need to go 950 more of those. Yeah. It'll be a long next couple of days, I bet. I don't think I'm gonna fill it up all the way in case we need to do some work to it. So I'll just put 10 gallons in or something like that. And then we'll fill it up whenever we leave. What a machine. They're not gonna hear us talk about their trailer. So we just got some gas and uh, this car and trailer was over by the gas station. 
And check out this trailer. It's made from like fence posts and exhaust tubing. Like, <laughs> we thought this car was sketchy, but uh, yeah, that's uh, That's awesome. What, uh, that's cool. What Our 14 year old daughter drives that car apparently yeah. and races it. I will say they might lose the car before they get to the racetrack. Yeah. That trailer is sketchy. Got no working gauges, a radio that doesn't work, holes in the floorboard, all the good stuff. So we do have the Terminator. That's we are okay. we are cruising, and it looks like we're actually going to make it back to where we came from. So it's a win. Overall, can't complain too much with this. They're right here. So you got to pump the brakes a few times, and your seat rocks every time you do it, which is extra exciting. Oh, you can even drive this thing one-handed. It's luxurious. I'm pretty sure it's all the original steering components from 1957. Like, and they don't look like they've ever been replaced. How many miles? I don't know. It's all faded from the sun. There's a four and a six. So 46,000 or 146,000. You can't really tell pedal wear because, well, there's no rubber on the pedal. The gas pedal. I don't know. But we made it back. We didn't die. That's a win. Put it right here. Success. The gas gauge actually moved. Cool. I don't know if it was working or not, but it was. Uh, it went from full down to empty when I turned the car off. All right, we gotta let them out of the back. There we go. It went for its maiden voyage. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> With a car full of people. That'll be the part. <laughs> and then, right there. Cut. That'll make the blooper reel. <laughs> it's my shoe somehow. <laughs> yeah, there's a catch on the back of that seat. <laughs> well, you didn't. it didn't end badly. <laughs> Just your yeah, pride is hurt a little, nothing else. No face yeah, the hood doesn't stay shut very well, so we're going to have to address that. But I don't see any... It looks massive leaks or anything it needs clean but it doesn't look terrible it's not a huge engine bay for the size of the car yeah. no it's a little short well like so much of your engine bay yeah. is like just empty space for no reason yeah. yeah so that's the way they did it there you go survived its maiden voyage now the real question is will it drive all the way to georgia but i think you're gonna have to wait for the next video to find out about that because this one's already entirely too long and uh, we'll just make this a multi-part series. And we need to clean up. So that's what we're gonna work on. And then hopefully we'll hit the road later today, but I'm kind of thinking it's probably gonna be tomorrow morning at sunrise because we have no real headlights or taillights yet. Still gotta fix that. But anyway, stay tuned to find out what happens on the next episode of Sally's Beach Out. Huge thank you to Ryan and Amanda, or Miranda, for letting us uh, crash at their house and make a mess of their garage. They're good people. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you guys, it was fun. All right, until the next time when we're actually on the road instead of just stuck in a garage rolling around on our backs. This is kind of like a uh, garage squad, only we're in somebody else's garage working on our car. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't really do so them not, any favors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Don't forget to check us out for daily content on Instagram at Jacob Ross Davis and the shop page at Sally Speed Shop. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you like, what you didn't like, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.